Hi there guys and welcome to this video on compound interest. Now, compound interest is something you're going to come across lots in your life, but the examples we're going to look at today really aren't that realistic to life. You have to wait until you get to A level to start having something that is reasonably realistic. So for example, let's say we invest £500 into a savings account at a bank. And when you do that, the bank offers you some money. The bank, in this case, is offering us 3% interest. And this little P dot A dot, that actually stands for per annum. And after three years, how much money will I have in my savings account? Well, people get this really wrong. So what, what they'll do is they're, they're quite happy at increasing by 500 pounds. So let's do that. So we're going to get 500 pounds. And to increase it by 3%, well, we'd now have 103%, so we're times in by the percentage multiplier, 1.03. And then what they do, they just simply times that by 3. And that is that is very wrong, and that is basically called simple interest, and we're not doing that. Now, if we work this out, you bear with me while I just type this in. So 500 times 1.03, that actually gives me... I could have just done that in my head, I'm very embarrassed now. That actually gives me, I have no idea why that just changed colour either, £515. But that obviously doesn't answer this question. If we call this one year zero, well actually no, let's call this year one, <clears throat> but this is the start, and this is still year one, and this is the end, which means when we start year two, I have 515 pounds. So this is now year two. So I start the year with 515 pounds, but the bank is going to give me another 3% interest. So I times again by 1.03. So I times by 1.03. And I have five hundred and thirty pounds. Sorry, sorry about that weird symbol I just did there. And forty-five pence. So this is at the end of year two. But well, then we're going to go into year three. And at the start of year three, I now have five hundred and thirty pounds with forty-five pence. But the bank is going to give me another three percent interest. And that would give me a total of five hundred and forty six pounds and thirty six pence. So it's not too bad. At the end of three years, for free, you have forty six pounds and thirty six pence. Now, if you're wondering, well, why do banks do that? Why why are they just give me free money? Basically what they do is they don't keep your £500 in a little box with your name on it for safekeeping for whenever you want it. They give that money to someone else and then the bank charge and uh, lend that money to maybe like 10% or 11%. So that's how they make money. You give them money, they give your money to someone else. As a reward, they give you a low interest and they charge a high interest to someone else and make money. <coughs> that's basically it. So that, that's compound interest. Now, you can see if I did 500 at the start times 1.03 times 3, what do we get from that? We get 1,545, and that's not simple interest. I've got that wrong there, but we'll talk about that in another video. But 1,545 pounds. So yeah, that'd be nice if we did that, wouldn't it? But that's absolute rubbish. We're not actually timesing it by 3. What are we doing? We're timesing it by 1.03 for the first year. I'm just going to write this again down here. So 500 times 1.03 for the first year. Then timesing it again by 1.03 for year 2. And then timesing it again by 1.03 for the third year. Now that's really inefficient, isn't it? So what we can actually do as a shortcut method is how much we're investing times the percentage multiplier 
and raise that to the number of years that we're repeating it for. So in this case, a three. If we change the question to seven years, I would just change that power to seven. And that's a really quick way we can calculate compound interest. Let's have a look at um, some basic questions here again. So very standard questions. So find the, the compound interest. So this is interesting. The interest, not what you have at the end. And we're going to have a bit more than 400, but it's actually the interest that you're going to earn. When £400 is invested at 7% for three years. Okay, so it's 400 times our percentage multiplier, which in this case is a 7% increase, so 1.07. And we're going to raise that rate for three years because we're keeping it in there for three years. So 400 times 1.07 cubed is 400 and 90 pounds and two pence. So the answer is 90 pounds and two pence. Now this was more than two decimal places on my calculator but I've rounded it to two because it's money. And that is the interest earned. If you write this you're going to lose a mark. Very similar, exactly the same question really, just different numbers. So 200 we're going to times that by 1.09 because we have a percentage multiplier increase of 9%, but that is happening for 5 years. So 200 times 1.09 to the power of 5. And that gives me 307.72, which is interest of £107.72. Now, you remember at the start of the video, I just said this is kind of realistic, but it's not really, because when you try and save for something, you don't normally just put £200 in and never add to it. What most people do is every single month you would add another 200 and that obviously complicates things and you're going to wait uh, for, for A-level sequences and series to tackle that sort of problem. But for now at GCSE, this is pretty much as hard as it gets. Sneaky one though. So let's have a look at this question. So find the final amount so that's not talking about the interest. When 28,000 is invested, so a bit of an uglier percentage, but we can deal with that. Ah, compound interest per month for two years. So let's start this out. So we've got 28,000, and we're going to times that by 1.019 for a percentage multiply increase of 1.9%. Remember, if it was... 1% it would be 1.01 .01, so you just pop the 9 on per month so this is paid per month but this is 2 years <clears throat> so 2 years that's 24 months isn't it so we're going to raise that to the power of 24 it's, it's very unlikely someone's going to pay you interest every month especially that high so this is going to be a pretty big number I think 1.019 to the power of 24. <laughs> okay, so that is now £43,988.43. and pence. So you bite someone's hand off if they're going to give you that much money. Okay, but this is why it's sneaky because it's paid interest per month for two years. So what a lot of people do is they'll only raise this to two. Very different answer. <clears throat> now, we can get harder problems and at GCSE this is kind of a frustrating problem we actually use something called logarithms when you get a bit further so let's have a look so we're going to invest two thousand pounds into a savings account they're going to offer us 1.5 percent so that's going to go up by 1.5 percent so there's my percentage multiplier for an increase of 1.5 percent but we don't know how many years so I'm just going to use an N for that but what it is saying that it's going to double our money. So we're going to end up with 4,000. Well, now it just comes down to solving equations, but we're going to use some, some sort of trial and error here. So if we divide by 2,000 to both sides, we're going to get 2. Now you can see this isn't a simple problem. <clears throat> 1.015 raised to something is 2. So... I'm just going to cheat actually 
and I'm not going to tell you how I did this. But basically, if you type in a 40, let's just type in a 46 in there, so 1.015 to the power of 46. you get 1.98 so you can see that's not quite 2 and when you change that to 47 so I'm going to press back on my calculator change the 6 to a 7 I get 2.013 now I'm not telling you how I got those numbers because all you're going to be expected to do is just try an error <coughs> I use logarithms but you can look it up if you want to, but just trial and error to solve these problems. So what is the answer? Well, a 46, it wasn't quite equal to 2, so it had to go over. 47 is a little bit more. But when have I doubled my money after 47 years? And again, that's very unlikely. No one's going to wait to save £4,000 for 47 years. You'll probably be putting in a thousand pound a month if you're saving for a house for example two even two thousand pound a month so it would take you one month to say for or two months or three months okay but you you're not going to be trying to say four thousand you're probably trying to say fifty thousand so it's a bit harder right in the news a lot look how cute they are a pangolin they're the most hunted and uh, what's it called, trafficked animal in the world because crazy people just want the scales so they just kill them, cut the scales off and I don't know what they use them for but just craziness so we're trying to protect them and I've made this question up, it's probably worse but so the number of pangolins in the wild are declining now this is something we haven't looked at yet each year by a rate of 38% now 2020 now so we're starting off with 4,000 but this time you can see it's a uh, it's declining and we use another word called depreciating so cars depreciate in value for example so this time it's not going to be I'm going to just put this here it's not going to be that because that will find 38 percent of 4,000 what we actually want to do is reduce it by 38 percent so that has to be 0.62 and again we don't know what that is but we do know our outcome is when is there only going to be 500 so if we just rearrange this divide by 4000 to both sides we're going to get 0.125 or 1 8th and now we have to solve this problem so what's it going to be? Uh, so I don't, didn't mean to write that. I was just going to write the answer. But so again, it's trial and error. So you just pop in random numbers. Uh, I'm going to show you the two that we're going to be looking at, and we're trying to get to 0 0.125. So just bear with me while I just do something a bit sneaky. Okay, so when you put a 4 in, easier this one, and a 5, so if you go 0 0.62 to the power of 4, you get 0 0.147, and when we change that value to a 5, we get 0 0.9. One. I must have typed something in wrong. Hang on, I'll <laughs> just do that again, guys. Okay, so 4000 times 0.62 to the power of 5. Okay, um, I, I just don't like the way this looks, but if you, if you go now and put put these in here so what I'll do is I'll just just delete this bit and I'm just going to pop on the 4000 here so you, so you can just see what's happening so if you type in 4000 times 0.62 to the power of 5 
you get 366.45. If we go ahead and change that to a 4, you get 591. So you can see after 4 years, there's still over 500. When there will be only 500 pangolins left, it's not at 5 years, it's going to happen somewhere between 4 and 5 years, but at 4 years it hasn't happened yet. So n is going to be 5, it's after 5 years. So it's just trial and error and you can just press back and change the numbers until you get what you're looking for. So that's it. So go ahead and practice. It's really easy. You'll pick it up in no time. So best of luck.